Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa ati Allah ati Rasulul Ulul Amri minkum And always a reminder from myself and abdukul ajisu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah we have the interactive Thursday and remember for all those who want to be more interactive <laughs> Go to help me, help me at nurmuhammad.com and email and keep connected. And we said before that the tariqah is not that we just click around and go from video to video and say, I like your video, I like your video, I like your video, and then think I'm in the tariqah. The tariqah is based on having a relationship with the shaykh, that there's a continuous dialogue that. You feel that you're under the nazar of the shaykh, that you're asking for guidance from the shaykh. And what happens in today's life is that we don't really want the guidance from the shaykh, we just want to watch from a distance different videos and then we want to follow our own desires. And that's where shaitan comes to play with the servant, that the allegiance and the bayah is to death. There is no breaking the bayat and the path was not based on you and you just doing what you want to do for the benefit of yourself. But it was to live a life of service and the darajat is even higher that those that have the ability to serve then they served in the mission of the shaykh to the best of what they can, not into the mission of themselves. And that's where shaitan comes to play with people to serve themselves and their own desires. So the tariqah is much more complex, much more difficult, much more strenuous that they build themselves, build themselves and then get the guidance. As they're advancing the guidance will come more towards how they're going to serve the mission of the shaykh which is to serve Sayyidina Muhammad Our life is about being of service to Prophet and that's the, the tashrif and tahzim and nabi How are we going to raise the magnificent status of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what our life was about. Whether I can do it eventually by my knowledges by my tongue, by my ability, my skills, the shaykh will inspire within our hearts how that service can come. Again based on the conditions Allah has given. Those whom Allah give immense rizq then inspire them that your rizq to support that way. Gave knowledges and understanding, a computer skill, a, a, a literary skill, whatever attributes and abilities that insan has is to be made available to the benefit of Sayyidina Muhammad That is what was promised on the day of promises. How to bring about that promise is the most important. Not about the self on how I'm going to achieve something. It's not important how you think you're going to achieve something for yourself. But if it was for the mission of the shaykh which is under the, the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad then that's far greater in its understanding. And that's the, 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 the lub, the center and the reality of tariqah. That if you come and, and we've said before, if you're generous Allah has written for you to be generous and you're in jahiliyyah buying drinks for everyone. Because you were generous and shaitan used your generosity for the wrong. It's the same characteristic of who you are. But when Allah guides He inspires within the heart, I have just this one with generosity. Don't let them to use that generosity for shaitan. And that's why then the guidance begins to come and to teach them, no, 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 be generous in the way of Allah Be generous, now more specific in the way of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Now more and more specific, be generous in the way of the love and the way of these awliya. Each has a mission. If you feel you're connected to that mission, that dawah, that work, 
support it, be a part of it, have something to do with it. Because it wasn't about yourself and you achieving something by yourself in the grave for yourself but was to be a part of that reality. So what made the Sahabi the Sahabi? Not their station by themselves and their, their station of what they achieve for themselves but because their companionship to Sayyidina Muhammad Why their immense rank is not something you can achieve because they were in the physical proximity in the life of Sayyidina Muhammad They didn't say hello and then walk away and then achieve something by themselves. Their life was to the service of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So means each in the darajat of, of their tarbiyah and their training has now degrees. Someone from a distance then the shaykh will begin to inspire them on their abilities, their understanding, their skills. So that how to be of service, how to tarbiyat themselves and if they are bi tarbiyat then they're of no value. Because that's why the tarbiyah, bi tarbiyat like bad character. So that's why again the tarbiyah comes to the school is, is develop your good character, your good manners so that you have something to give. If it's with bad manners, bad energy what, what could we possibly be of service in that reality? So we pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of the depth of that reality and the mission of that reality and that the shaykhs never, never leave that reality, that they try their best to serve with all their life. If there are any modifications from Sayyidina Muhammad then that's something separate and that's in the will of the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad that may shift somebody and that's by an order of Sayyidina Muhammad What do we got? As alaikum Sayyidi, uh, what is the difference between heart and qalb? In Qur'an Allah says that, I know what's in your heart but the heart function is only pumping. Yeah that's, that's you just joined us probably because that in our teaching Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillahir Rahman Raheem is that there's a, a physicality and there's a spirituality. And anything you try to learn from the physical dimension is nothing in comparison to the spiritual dimension. So the qalb is a vessel that contains your blood physically but Allah says that qalb al-mu'min baytullah that the heart of the mu'min is a house of Allah So now Allah giving us a clue that in this heart of yours why is it the center of your body? You know you can be brain dead but not heart dead. You can be brain not functioning but the, you cannot be heart not functioning. Why? Because it's the center, command, control center of your physicality. Then Allah gives a hint that, no, no it's also the command center of your spirituality. Because when your soul comes into that piece of flesh, your soul is a power like a unseen Wi-Fi battery. So this piece of flesh at 120 days it's just flesh growing. They're waiting for something at 120 days and all of a sudden you hear the heart go <laughs> What happened? A battery came, a power source came into that hunk of flesh which is what? Soul. The soul is powered Wi-Fi. There's no wires connected to it, Allah says, it's not from you. It's from my oceans of samadhiya that I sustain it, I maintain it and I send all of the energy for it. Means an unseen energy source enters into the body and occupies the body, energizes the body. It is the power source within the heart. That heart sends all its energy, its blood to all the organs and nourishes. So the heart, the qalb has many realities. And then from our teachings you can go deeper in just the understanding from the huruf qaf wal Qur'an al-Majeed lam bah. 
Allah's qul, Divinely speech that nothing can contain that speech, there's not an angel that can carry it, only the reality in the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad can carry that reality. And that qul to what we said at the beginning of the night, if the shaykh teaches you just ba that you already went into paradise from that knowledge. How Allah can burn you with that, that knowledge that been dressed upon you. He can punish you to clean you, yeah, but not send you into eternal fires. The knowledge is what save you. So means that qul to the ba, Allah's izzah and might and power hits the ba and begins to open Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and all uloom and knowledges are flowing from that ocean and that river. So qalb means something different to Allah So many, many different layers of, of meanings, it's never the physical, inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, Sayyidi, when is it better during the day to do one's muraqaba? There is a tendency to more easily fall asleep during meditation after maghrib. Yeah, because you're, you, you're, uh, you've just eaten and that's probably not the best time to, to do your muraqaba. It's between asr and maghrib that if you come home from work and you want to meditate and it's not too noisy in the house and work is closing down. And before you eat anything with a hungry stomach, empty stomach, try to do some meditation. Where you sit, you breathe after your Salat al Asr and just listen to salawat, see yourself in Medina to Munawwara and breathing and go through all of our practices and you can email the help me at Nur Muhammad on the steps towards that. If you're good with that and practiced at that then after Salat al Isha. After everyone has gone, long after you have eaten dinner, have some tea, dark tea, black tea, something that keeps you awake. And then Salatul Isha, after Salatul Isha or Salatul Tahajjud that you rested for Salatul Isha after you rested Salatul Isha and before you pray your fajr, wake up just a few minutes earlier and do your meditation at that time. Very powerful because as the world is sleeping, your energy and your connection with the Divine is much more powerful. When the world is busy at work, it's they are tying up the signal like Wi-Fi. When everyone's online, the signal is bad. When everyone's sleeping and the one whom wakes, this is Salatul Qiyam when Allah describes the servant who wakes in the middle of the night to read Qur'an, Qiyam al-Layl which is tremendous in its power. Allah says, spend the whole night awake. Okay, no, if you can't do that, spend half the night and wake. No, if you can't do that, spend at least one third the night to be awake. Means that that last one third before the, the faraj and the fajr, the rising of the sun, then has a tremendous power. And that's an immense time to do the meditation, tafakkur, and trying to make your connection. The meditation consists of learning how to breathe and breathing practices. And then the muraqaba, how to connect with the shaykhs, how to connect and feel the energy and the presence of the shaykhs and making that spiritual connection, inshaAllah. Can Sayyidi please explain more about the event horizon and the reversal of the contract? Those subjects in the articles are, are easier to read because the people who read those articles understand at that level. They're reading it trying to understand. When we try to address it to a general audience then there's always going to be a, a bit of difficulty in, in trying to get a general audience to be at the same page and understanding without confusing everyone. The event horizon is a state in which you're trying to lose your hope of dunya. That with the energy, with the practices, with all the knowledges, the dunya should be deflating from you. Why they taught about Sayyidina Mahdi was not for you to figure, is this actually tomorrow? I don't believe you, it's not happening. It was to take dunya out of your heart. 
If somebody come and tell you this wonderful dinner you're eating is filled with maggots, he has successfully taken away your appetite. Right? You want to watch your, you have a beautiful dinner and the kids turn on a horrible television show. Immediately your appetite's gone. It's like, what the heck you put that on right before I want to eat? Why you did like that? It pulled your appetite. So the appetite for dunya from the eyes has to be pulled. So they show you the maggots. They say, look everything's collapsing, everything's being destroyed. Are you really making a 20 year plan and, and spend all your time to make a career in, in an industry and, and that's going to be your whole hope? Do you see it's all falling, it's all uh, failing, everything and everyone's dying, they're buying masks. You think mask is going away? <laughs> they, they show you this, this image of there's a mask for, for carpentry, very nice sophisticated like this. There's a mask for painting, beautiful you know all this gas mask for painting. Now a mask for COVID is a piece of paper from India. <laughs> Seem like they took more precaution on painting and carpentry. And they don't care, let insan die. Insan's value to these people is 25 cents, the price of a bullet. But insan's value to, to Allah is immense. He created this creation from love. So their life is to come and to teach with their teaching. Not that you use your head to guess, oh you've been saying this forever. Well then you're still eating and enjoying that food. We must be doing something wrong because we should be teaching you in a way your appetite has dropped. You see the plate as something very dangerous and that was the purpose. That was the understanding of teaching about Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, teaching about all of the signs and the, and the signs of calamity was not to use your head with the shaykh but for them to pull your dunya desire out. And then put everything in perspective, I better have an account with Allah first. As soon as they do that they begin their practices, they begin their zikrs, they begin their salawats, they begin their istighfar. Now more than ever Allah has helped them. Everybody is ordered home, everybody is sitting in their homes now doing isolation. Everybody has been collapsed of their careers, of their work, of their aspirations. Even their favorite places to eat are all changing. The world is changing and not going back. It's entering in its death phase. More and more restrictions, more and more difficulties coming upon the earth. So Allah has now joined in in the marketing. So it means that now the signs and spiritual teaching and the physical reality of the earth are matching more and more day by day. And that was the reality. When you begin to believe that, practice with that, make your istighfar, you find your taste for dunya gone, Ya Rabbi, um, I'm, I, my love for you and Prophet I think I'm okay to go. I think if I take care of the, my family and they get what they want and everyone's settled, I'm ready to go. And when they believe that they're okay to go and they believe that they really have no attachments and they believe that they're going to be good with Sayyidina Muhammad he'd be happy with them, inside they're dying and they're understanding their death and they're ready to go. As a result their life force is dropping. That when you're too much alive within your being, you're too much shining, too much on, too much wanting to, to live this life. When they have been full from everything, disgusted by everything, their energy level is dropping. As a result they can enter into a death phase. With their istighfar and their trainings the shaykhs will take them to a state of death before death in which they begin to collapse. When they collapse and die from that reality, right now the soul is hidden within the physicality and everything of your desires is locking the soul and not giving it any ability. And that's the contract of this dunya except for death. Death is in the contract that if the servant dies the soul will be governing his physicality. Because the soul comes out into the grave and rules, 
So, Mawt Qabl al Mawt is a reversal in the contract that they're entered into a state in which Allah releases their soul upon the body. So that's why we say when the shaykhs enter into zikr, their soul is in the zikr. They're doing the zikr with their soul and that's why their soul is in the room and everybody's connected to that Wi-Fi. Their soul is in the home of anyone that sees them. When you look at their picture their soul is present with you. If you look at their live picture their live soul is with you all the time. That's why Shaykh Nazim would say, look at my face. Anytime you want just look at my face, why? Because as soon as you look at them these are the, the, the servants whom their souls are free. As soon as you look at the face the soul is present with you. The minute you look the soul is present with you. If you call him, Madad Madad Ya Sayyidi Ya Sultanul Awliya then you feel the fires of the shaykh. And Allah said, don't deem them dead in their grave, they're very much alive. And that's why we said at the beginning, these are the mujahid. These are the big warriors of Allah Not the one who took a sword and hit people on the head only. The great warrior who fought himself and then propagated knowledges across the earth. When they die, Allah says, don't deem them dead in the grave, they're very much alive. Some reclining on thrones, some on couches, some on chairs. Means Allah gave what a status to them that you see them on thrones. Many have visions of them on oceans sitting on a throne. Why oceans? Because Allah says, my might and power is on the may. Allah's might and power is on an ocean and their throne is a symbol of their authority. When you see the shaykh in a dream on a throne means that Allah is showing you this one is on an ocean of power with a tremendous authority. And that's the reality. So it means their souls are free. After the event horizon was what? Um, can you explain more about the event horizon and the reversal of the contract? Yeah that was it. Is the death before death and that to, to have your soul to govern your physicality. They begin to see, that's the hadith when my servant did all his fard, begins to do his practices from love and muhabbat. He follows the sunnah, he starts to act through sincerity. Allah says, I become his hearing, I become his seeing, I become the hands in which he touch. All of that hadith al-Qudsi is a reality that opens on the soul. When Allah is saying, I'm going to give you from my hearing, means I'm going to give the power of your soul from my sifat of al asami and you're going to hear with my hearing which has no limit. The awliya say they can hear, there are awliya that have trained and they can come and tell you that they can hear the zikr of a fish in a fish tank. What you can hear is something unimaginable and can be so loud that you can't sleep. You think everything is silent? No, if Allah turn on a sifat for you just to understand one day that, Ya Rabbi just from your power what are you talking about? And say, so you hear this fish is making a zikr, <gasps> with every breath out, so loud you hear it you can't sleep or the scratching of an ant. At a distance its movement can be heard and this is only hat the dunya. And if you heard from the heavens and spoke to souls that are within paradises, within the heavens, what kind of hearing is that? <coughs> it's not your hearing. So the darajat of that hearing and the darajat of that sight. Allah can make what's in a microscope appear big to you and in front of your face. Like asleep you're seeing it and it's like a microscope has been expanded for you so you can see everything and move it around. Or he can take your soul to see within the heavens. So these things are not something that anyone can list, uh, limit and this is why it's Hadith al-Qudsi. It's under the level of Holy Qur'an that it's so pious, so holy and so powerful these hadith of a reality that Allah is stressing upon malakut. And what that potential is from Malakut, inshaAllah. There are quite a few questions related to how to connect with the shaykh. 
So, Sayyidi, how my connection to you, how do I make my connection to you much stronger, like perfect strong? And then someone else is <coughs> asking, um, kindly let me know how to show adab when Murshid is far in a different city and build a strong connection with him. Yeah, that's why we are broadcasting all these tafakkur, inshaAllah. This whole concept of tafakkur is to take the pictures of the shaykh and then make your meditation. That, Ya Rabbi kunu ma sadiqeen, have a taqwa and keep the company of pious people. Allah is not talking about physicality, Allah doesn't care about your physical world only. He's saying that keep their company. And that's why in your salah, Salaamu Alaikum Ayyuhan Nabi wa Ibadullahi Saliheen. They're even facing you in your salah. Otherwise, you're giving them salams. So, all of these realities are all there in front of us, and Allah said, Why well, you don't connect with them? So, it means then the madad, the, the tafakkur, the contemplation is that how to keep my heart connected with the spiritual realm, how to go through the practices of connecting myself, understanding the energy, doing the energy practices and seeing them in front of me always. Look to their face, to their face look and then close your eyes, I don't want to be with you, visualize that they're in front of you, that they're sending their fires and their energy all around you and that you're a weak servant and you want to connect. Don't think that you're going to see right away, in your package is only the basic program. So your computer only comes with a picture of Mickey Mouse, hmm, 10 years ago, <laughs> it doesn't change. I think now maybe they upgraded to what else could your basic package have. <laughs> so when you buy a computer, you don't get the latest software, the most advanced software, you get a Mickey Mouse package, right? So you close your eyes right now and say, can you see Mickey Mouse? Hi everyone. You see like this, this is the, the hat. <laughs> toodles, toodles. Don't you watch the Mickey Mouse with the kids? Hey toodles. Mickey Mouse is in the basic package. So anyone can close their eyes now and see Mickey Mouse. It's not a problem at all, you see him looking at you and everything. Now come to say you want to see Sayyidina Muhammad then you need from Mickey Mouse to the heavens uh, immense upgrades in your software. And that's what Allah wants. You have the ability and you have the capability within the heart. But that heart has to have immense upgrades in its software, in its practices. So then I visualize the shaykh but I don't think I'm worthy of seeing the face of the shaykh. I just visualize that I'm in their presence, I looked at the picture and I'm there with my belief, of course I'm with my shaykh. And my shaykh is always, his nazar is upon me and my shaykh and my shaykhs and my shaykhs, all of them are there looking at me. And I'm admitting to myself my bad character, I know I have bad character, I have all this badness in me, I don't need to see anything, I just need to believe it for myself. And that's what we call iman. When you believe that you're in their presence, don't you believe the shaitan is all around you making you do horrible things every five seconds? So he must be all around you. You don't need anyone to convince you that shaitan is around you. Every time you do boo boo then you know he was there. So same, you say, if shaitan is there, Allah is not leaving me alone with shaitan. Of course he has a representative from Rahman always with me. So my shaykhs are always with me. I don't need to see them with my eyes clear, I'm not at that level and then you begin to humble yourself, humble yourself. And this is a path of humility that my heart and my soul knows they're right there in front of me. But I'm not ready to see them my Lord, my, my character is bad, my, my, my things are bad Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And let them keep coming closer and say, no it's okay you can see us and say, I'm no, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. It's a path of humility, not like people now, I want to see you. Why do you want to see? Who are you that you want to see something? What did you achieve that? that comes so quick to you like that. It's like a McDonald's character, everything like right now drive through. But this is a path of the eloquence of humility that I'm nothing. I really believe I'm nothing and I have done many sins Ya Rabbi, please forgive me. 
Please say to you, forgive me, let me just to be in the company, dress me with your faiz, dress me with your light. Imagine then they take you later to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no difference that when I say, visualize Rosa Sharif, nobody should be visualizing that they're looking straight into the face of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah says in Qur'an when Nabi Musa said, Ya Rabbi let me see you and Allah got upset by that. Why? Why to see me? What, what kind of question is that? So same for Rosa Sharif, I'm nothing Sayyid Ya Rasul Kareem just I want to be at your holy sandal, just let me hold the gate and hold this and dress me from your fires, dress me from your fires. So they took a life in which their head was always down. When we went to Turkey the the maqams and the zawiyas of the shaykhs had a chain at the door, means don't come upright to us. Don't come through the door, hey what's up? They had a chain so that you had to keep your ihtiram and keep your head down and enter into the door. So they had all of these things as a symbol. Why they had to put a chain because they probably everybody was forgetting. So the zawiyah's door had a chain across it so you actually had to bow to come down. And Allah says that in the Qur'an He did that too. They were not bowing so He made the door small so that they would bow and the clever ones went the reverse way and went in backwards oh. as to not bow for ihtiram and respect. Right, then you lower the door you go this way then they say, no we're coming backwards and then come in. So the nafs of people is just something wild, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, I am sensitive, I'm a sensitive person to energies. How can I disconnect from unwanted people or energies? <coughs> yeah, the energy practices are and they show us how we're all tethered to everyone. So there's a, a cord, like an umbilical cord that comes from us. This with the shaykhs, with Sayyidina Muhammad with Allah gave us an umbilical cord to show us that reality. So it means that when we're understanding the tafakkur Allah says that, I gave you this umbilical cord to show that you're attached to something, you're not alone. You're not by yourself, you were attached to your mother's womb for your support in which you were nourished and fed within the womb. As soon as you came into this dunya you felt that you became something disattached which you are not and that's why Allah left that as a reminder. So in their tafakkur they understood that they have a connection to the shaykh through their belly button. They have a connection to Sayyidina Muhammad and they have a connection to the Divinely Oceans. And many times in their tafakkur they may see themselves with many souls gathered and this cord is flowing into that ocean of energy. But it teaches us that we have unseen cords to people whom we love and that's a cord from the heart. That every time we put our heart onto something and to someone there's a cord being produced. You're making a wire and a connection. So why we say, Rabbit is Sharif, the noble connection? That's a noble connection because the heart is not something to give to people because Allah wants it only for the Divinely Presence. So it means that nobility of that connection and that's why they come to teach you, don't give your heart to everything. Your heart is for Allah and His Rasul So it means as soon as they put out that connection then there's a tremendous amount of energy flowing on that connection. If you start to put out this cord from the heart onto other locations there's a danger because anyone on the other side of that connection if they're sending the good energy then it's a good energy, if they begin to send a bad energy the bad energy going to affect you. So if they send a, a jolt in that connection that bad energy will begin to affect you. And that's why then they learn to disattach from their heart that energy and what we call jigarit. When we have in a term in, in Farsi probably from Urdu jigarit biram. Yeah, not 
not only qalb, even in Farsi they, they took for the sine, my chest. And many, they have many expressions for the heart, most of them not the heart. Because they understood the heart is only for the Divine. But my chest for you and that became symbolic of saying the heart. But it wasn't the heart, it was literally just my chest for you. And what's inside my chest for you but my heart is only for Allah and His Rasul Because those shaykhs at that time were teaching people, your heart, you can't put everybody in your heart because then everything they do is going to affect your heart and you're going to have heart attacks. Because your heart is being jolted in every direction possible. Put everything else somewhere else in your chest. What are the words we have for, for, for chest honey? We have the sine, sinam mawlajan, sinam sangomad, najjan mati, hamid. Dalam, we have del. Yeah, so we have many things, del is stomach even, but it's basically saying from here to here for you. But not specifically saying my heart because then that was an adab that the shaykhs taught, don't do that. If you let everybody occupy your heart, every time you're, you, you get in a fight with your, your family and loved ones, you're going to feel like you're having heart attack because they're occupying a place and then they're jolting your energy up and down. So then they learn to disattach that and put that into their del <laughs> and heart was for Allah Because the heart and Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad they never disappoint you. You disappoint them. We all disappoint them but they don't, they don't disappoint us. And he's Rasul Kareem because he forgives everything and he keeps sending generous love, keeps sending barakas, keeps sending blessings, he keeps sending hope, don't worry, don't worry everything will be okay. So when the heart connected to that source it's always then consistent, their lives are not going up and down like crazy, they're keeping a consistent flow of energy. Everything else is in turmoil. Everyone else is all over the place and all their relationships are all over the place but their heart has a firmness because it learned to connect with Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, what is your advice for people who lost their jobs because of this current situation? How can we focus more on practices when the mind is drifting away, worrying about house rent, bills, etc.? Yeah. Difficult, that's a, that's you know that's the difficulty of this dunya right now that to try to learn to make tafakkur as times are becoming more difficult. Just think today is going to be easier than tomorrow. If you thought today was difficult, yesterday was easier, <laughs> right? If you had watched this video a year ago you would have heard that they meditate before it gets hard. And now that it really got hard, yeah I can imagine it's going to be very difficult. But inshaAllah as far as rizq and sustenance try to find more work, new work, industries change. You know if you were selling something then the industry changes. You work for people who make masks instead of restaurants. I don't think restaurants are going to be open much longer, not in the, in the system of you know dining and the 50 people sitting in a restaurant. So you work for a mask manufacturer, find a different industry related to what condition this earth is in now and inshaAllah Allah send support and, and send blessings. Most important is whatever you make give. You know the shaykh has a system that Prophet has given to them that the du'as and the barakah that Prophet has given to them was to propagate their mission. Not that you take their magic seeds and run away. If everyone come just to take the du'a and run then what would be the benefit of the tariqah, how would the tariqah ever grow? So they train the students that if you want this barakah then from what Allah give to you, give. And that's why the tariqahs are so strong, so strong. What communities look and say, we can't do anything, how this group of tariqahs they can do these things? Because they enable the system of what Prophet has told to them. That if your people want to be prosperous they have to have a strong system of whatever they earn they're giving back to the shaykh. 
because that shaykh is the one who's praying for them and then praying for their continued success. Why? Because they're continuously supporting. With that support the shaykh can fulfill his covenant with Allah From that support they do their dawah, their practices, their shows, everything that they have to do to be successful for their dawah and what Allah want for them for people to come towards that reality. When they understood that system then no problem. The shaykh is praying for you to be successful. That from what you get then give generously in that way and then you create a system of barakah that always flowing. We say, don't eat the principle but take the extra fruit for if you should eat the tree you won't even have fruit on it anymore. So most people live their life where they got this one good blessing and then they start eating, they eat all the fruit, they cut down the tree and at the end they have not even a shakh, <laughs> it's just a stick out of the ground. You weren't supposed to do that in life. You were supposed to let the tree f flourish and go take five of the fruits and give them to the shaykh. Then he would take those seeds and plant more for you so that your tree was never empty. Because you say, he would tell you, no, no there's another tree that grew for you, look we planted the seed for you. And you're always taking from these trees, those who are more generous they have lots of trees, lots of barakah flowing because always the fruit is growing. But the one who hoards everything for themselves, they want to save everything thinking it's all going to end, how is it going to end? How you go this far? All of a sudden forgot something God forbid? No, you go this far Allah's going to take you the rest of the way until you take your last breath. But from what you planted then share in it and then that tree is always standing and you're just taking from this fruits inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how do I become a meditation master so I can teach my people and are we allowed to make a WhatsApp group so we always spread Sayyidi's teachings between ourselves? <laughs> inshaAllah. It's good to have a himmah. <laughs> to, to, want to, to want to do good things and that's alhamdulillah it's good, it's good, it's good. But <laughs> there's a couple, couple warnings on, on the WhatsApp group that anytime we do dawah we, we don't make it into a Turkish bazaar. And the concept of a Turkish bazaar because these were Turkish shaykhs so they would always <laughs> give this example is that everybody just selling their goods everywhere. The knowledge has to be one direction, unidirectional. So it means you make any type of group that has 50, 60 people and there's only one person posting. And that post goes out, this is the link to the videos, this is Shaykh's teaching. As soon as you open up the bazaar means that 50 people, 50 people are posting. You actually then created a room of immense confusion. Because you may have had 40 good students that were really firm on the shaykh's belief. As a result of inviting them into that group you know 30 different crazy posts came in and you lost 10 of them. They went and clicked on other things, they found other people, they, they read other things and they found this is haram and that is haram and this is a bid'ah and this is forbidden. So unless you have full control we don't open the system like that. The dawah is very one direction, we post this is the reading. You don't like it go to a different place and read different things but not 50 people posting 50 ideas and 49 of them are just all over the place. So that, that's something you have to be careful for. But as far as growing and building your practices inshaAllah try your best to build yourself and have something. You can't give what you don't have. First work our whole system of giving, supporting, building, perfecting. At that time once you know yourself you'll know your mission from Allah By the help of the shaykhs and the fires that reaching from their shaykhs all the way down. As the person begins to know their demons they learn how to fight them. As they begin to know their reality they know what Allah has called them for. So that stage is important to reach that before any type of hope or aspirations to do this or that. We have to begin to know ourselves inshaAllah. With that inshaAllah we let everybody break for, for dinner. Thank you very much. Jumma Mubarak to everyone please support, please go online, please uh, help me at nurmuhammad.com. InshaAllah we have also the qurbans that anyone wanting to give the qurban go to the online Nur Muhammad donate 
and designate the qurban. If you want to have the qurban for yourself, alhamdulillah we're also doing a qurban distribution into Pakistan and uh, we have our qurban programs here. So it's not only a matter of just the qurban that you want to eat and, and distribute but as much as we can give we're going to be sending it abroad to the different programs inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.